All right, folks, welcome back. This is our 25th episode of the free YouTube ICT Mentorship for 2022. And I want to open this video up with a few, very brief monologue. <laughs> okay, all right, some of you are trying to scrub the video, get past this part. But bear with me for just for a few moments, please. Now, I want you to think about how I opened this mentorship up. How I promised certain things. I said you would learn specific logic that would repeat, that it would be algorithmic. It would look similar each time it does it. There would be specific rules implied that you would have to follow. And I taught on the basis of time and price. So there's going to be things that obviously repeat with those themes. But I want you to go into tonight's lesson with those promises in the forefront of your mind. Is what I'm teaching and has what I've been teaching exactly what I promised? Are you seeing it in the chart yourself? Now, I'm not asking for a show of hands how many of you are profitable trading with live funds. That's not what I'm saying here. None of you should be trading with live funds with this. You're all still learning it. I'm reading some of the comments and some people are raising their hand up saying, I just killed it today using what you taught, made this much money, blah, blah, blah. I don't want you doing that. Okay, because what you're doing is you're rushing in because you have a sugar rush. You have a high right now. Because you're seeing things that make sense to you, it resonates with you, and that's great. But don't be in a hurry to get out there and try to make money yet. There's things, that, like you'll see tonight, that will help you still when you think you've already learned it. You haven't. And this is for the folks that are commenting in my videos, saying that there are other people that will teach what I'm teaching better and to the point. Nobody knows what I'm teaching. I'm teaching this for the first time. Okay, uh, and you don't know the details behind what it is I'm teaching. You don't know how far I'm going to take it. And most of these guys don't even really trade. So they sound like smart geniuses after the fact with market replay or old data. And they have my vocabulary. What I do is I call it before it happens. I outline it and why it should happen. Because that's proof of understanding the logic. That, that's understanding the algorithm. I'm not implementing Wyckoff. I'm not putting anything in here with supply and demand. And Mr. Chris Lowry can come here and tell me if I'm teaching or trading anything like him. Because I promise you, none of this is found in his stuff. Period. Okay? So, when you see folks say, this person teaches ICT better than ICT, or more to the point, really what they're saying is, they truncate the concepts down to demonstrating hindsight so that way it makes them able to sell courses to the neophytes notice i'm not selling you anything i have already made millions of dollars i don't need to hold my hand out and ask you to pay my bills i do this because i love doing it i don't have a paypal i don't have a credit card swiper i don't have a cash app i don't do any of those things i do this because i love doing it and I am absolutely loving Hannah FX or Hannah 4X YouTube channel because number one, it's given me the female perspective and someone that I think that is really trying to make a, a go of it. And I'm not concerned whether she really sticks with it long term. And she may come to the conclusion that this is not worth it for her or it doesn't really jive. It doesn't matter. I'm interested in her development. I'm interested in all of your developments. Obviously, I can't follow every single person that follows me on YouTube. And some of you may be feeling slighted, like, why'd you pick her and not my channel? Please don't look at it that way. Understand it from a father's perspective, because I look at all of you like my children, even those that are older than me. I try to teach you with the mindset that someone that has been through this longer than most of you, if not all of you, and... I don't want to see you get hurt. But I also have a daughter that I'm trying to inspire to do this on her own because I don't want her relying on another man to feed her, to take care of her. 
And I also want her to be able to break those lines of feeling comfortable because she's our daughter. So I'm actively interested in this particular YouTuber for that reason. Because I have a daughter that I'm trying to draw affinity with trading through her. Okay, so it may not work, but it's just me seeing how another young lady that is inspired to dig into these charts and understand what they're doing, why they're doing what they're doing, and hopefully that will inspire my daughter. Okay, so for the folks that are emailing me and saying, hey, look, can you follow me? Can you do this? Can you do that? Just understand that it's not my interest to try to, you know, sprinkle myself over everyone's channel because I think for the most part, when I make an appearance in their comment section, it's just like, a rush of people coming in and like high-fiving me and, and you know, pra praising me in their comment section. I don't like that. I don't want to do that. If you all would just refrain from doing it, I'd probably comment more <laughs> on other people's channels. But I think it's rude. Okay, I don't think it's appropriate. And to those that I have made a appearance in their comment section and my friends and associates and students that have come behind and created like a circus environment around it, I apologize because that's not what I'm showing up for. I'm going there because either I watched your video, I felt that you gave something that was useful to the community, or I just inst I just liked it. So there's that. So with all that, let's get into the meat. All right, so we're looking at the E-mini S&P futures June 2022 delivery contract price action for the daily chart. Now, before I get into this, please write this in your journal, okay? Put your sandwich down, <laughs> turn the TV off, excuse yourself from your children and your spouse, go in another room. I promise we're only gonna be here for a couple minutes tonight. Everything I'm teaching you here works in Forex, okay? It works in Forex, it's not limited to index features. Please stop asking questions in the comment section that are answered if you just simply paid attention to the videos that I've already produced, okay? Maybe some of you just recently got to this and you came to this video first. Don't start here. Go back to the very first one, okay? Now, when we're looking at the daily chart, I want you to think about what it is that I talked about before happening, explained in great detail why it should take place, and when the chart looked like this. Remember I was talking about how that specific order block was a catalyst for setting up a future move that shouldn't see the high of that candle pierced. In other words, that's the most unlikely level that's being here, right here, okay? Price should not go to and through that. This is the most unlikely level to be traded to with a bearish order block. Now, for some of you who are like, oh, can you teach order blocks? I've already taught and introduced order blocks. For some of you that are asking about order blocks, watch my sniper series, okay? The Scout Sniper series, it's in his YouTube channel, it's free. I introduced the order block there, and I'm also teaching more throughout the other series and specifically in this one. Now, that's not the whole of this model. It's not the secret sauce, okay? The fair value gap is what I'm trying to teach you to focus on because that small little area in price action, that is the thing that is the easiest. If I were to be asked simply, what is it that's the easiest thing for a new trader to sit down and understand right away? That's what this mentorship is. This is somebody that has never traded before, that doesn't really know a whole lot about technical analysis. This is my introductory version of that. Uh, there's a lot of people, and Hannah mentioned this before, she doesn't believe that my concepts are for like the Neophyte, like the brand new. Um, I went in with that mindset, with this teaching series. Now, obviously, I'm not going to teach what a PIP is. I'm not going to teach, you know, how to calculate, you know, <laughs> the smallest fluctuation in price because those things can be Googled. Okay, those are, they're obvious things that anyone can look up. But the basic of basic, understanding the time axis down here on the bottom and the price axis up here and understanding how to find the time frames, like this is a daily chart. You can see that right here. I work through TradingView. You may not want to use TradingView. Maybe you use Sierra Charts. Maybe you use NinjaTrader. Maybe you use TradeStation too. All those things or 
TD Ameritrade. You know, there's all these different brokers out there. But what I want you to learn through and practice through is trading view. Okay? You don't need to have a subscription to do what I'm showing you. You don't need to pay for anything. You'll see ads and it's okay. But the bottom line is, is I want you to look at the charts like this. Then you can segue into whatever your platform is and work with it there. But understand, learning the way I'm teaching you with this medium is the best way of doing it. So with that, understand that I mentioned that we would go into this area here, not trade to the top of that candle. And all this is mentioned in this mentorship series. Go back and watch those videos. And I mentioned that we would draw down into here and into here. So underneath that low here, and these relative equal lows, that's sell side liquidity. What was the framework that led to me telling you that this was a bearish order block and we're watching that and that could set up a run into our May seasonal tendency? Now, seasonal tendencies are times in the year where markets or specific asset classes will move generally, not always, not 100% of the time, not absolutely never going to fail. <laughs> they historically have produced price swings that follow a seasonal tendency. That means they usually happen. And one of the things I like to use as a, I guess, a, an analogy would be, I live on the East Coast of the United States. So if I live in the East Coast of the United States and I reside in Maryland, okay, would it be reasonable for me to expect snow on the 4th of July? No. What's more likely? Sunny, hot. Okay, so that's the seasonal influence. Well, that same influence, not that specific, not that, that dramatic, obviously, but there are periods in the year where the markets have a tendency to do certain things. May tends to be a month where the market in index futures and stocks, they generally drop, they go down. I gave you that beforehand. I explained it to you. Now, I didn't give you the details about it, but just understand going in every single year, about the last week or so of April, going into the month of May, there's usually a tendency for these markets, specifically the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, the Russell, that group of markets tends to be weak. Not all the time, but generally, if you study, go back through old data, you'll see that's true. Now, by itself, it doesn't mean, really mean much. But in the hands of someone that's initiated with what I'm teaching you, it is a roadmap to consistency. You can practice and learn a lot about price action by doing this every single year, going through old data, and then you can forward test it going into next year and maybe all the years after. But what took place was we had these relative equal highs. I mentioned this. They took the buy stops or the buy side liquidity out. Who's doing that? Smart money. These individuals that go in and they sell to these buy stops when it's like this. And at the same time, when we're entering a period of time where there's a bearish seasonal tendency, that means bearish prices lower expected going into May. So we're seeing a run on liquidity here with this high. So it bumps above these highs and then breaks down. Then we go into an area I mentioned that's a very shorter block. And I said, we're going to aim for here and then under here and then under, under here. Okay, so I gave you a perspective beforehand so that we could study it. Each day, looking for lower prices. Going in, looking for the pattern I taught you in this mentorship around specific elements of time. We have this big move from here down here where it attacked the sell stops or sell side liquidity. What took place here? Smart money sold to the buy stops. So now they're sitting with a net short position. How did they get out of that position? They have to buy it back. How can they buy it back at a cheaper price guaranteeing them that they're going to be buying from lower priced sellers? Find the sell stops here. Sell side liquidity rests below here. Why are there sell stops below there? Because traders have models that want to capture these types of moves and expect things like this high to be taken out before they start trailing their stop loss. Large fund traders, not 
retail Rick that trades on MT4. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. But historically, you're going to find out that retail traders are going to have many times their stop losses in the same area that large funds will. The only difference and the only contrast between the two is that retail Rick or people that are very small speculators, the small traders' liquidity is so minute, it's tiny, it's irrelevant. But that argument is used by people that don't understand what they're talking about because they'll say, what I'm teaching, other quote unquote institutional traders or other YouTubers laugh when they say, they look at what I'm teaching and they say, it doesn't work or it's nonsense or it's a fallacy. These same people aren't going out and saying how it's a fallacy when I'm calling it before it happens. And now when I say things like that, that takes people that want to come in critically and say, look, he's bragging. I'm not bragging. I'm asking you all to come in and investigate the things I'm teaching. If they don't hold up, they won't hold up. But if they hold up and the things I'm talking about happen before they happen, what does that mean? Does it mean it's luck? No. Is it leaning on any retail logic? No. It's not support and resistance. It's not supply and demand. I'm trading with factors that are outside of that. So what is it? I'm teaching you liquidity. I'm showing you that market efficiency paradigm that I taught early in this series, where you are being trained to go into the marketplace and look at how liquidity that is resting in the market or will be engineered to be there where you want it to be. What's that mean? Above old highs, those buy stops are being triggered. So smart money can go short. They're selling short to these buy stops and they're gonna buy it back from resting sell stops that are resting below here, sell side liquidity. So we're not looking at pattern sake trading. We're not looking at indicators. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel, rename old retail logic that's flawed and gimmicked. I'm teaching you a whole different perspective on how these markets book. They have always booked like this. The advantage is that everything is switched to electronic trading. That means it's much more efficient and faster. So me teaching this is not going to change the fact that this is what goes on. Okay. It will not stop working. You will have losing trades if you trade with live funds. Understand that. I have losing trades. You're going to have losing trades. But you're going to understand why you're wrong. You won't beat yourself up about it if you're smart and listen to what I'm t telling you to do and avoid the things that toxic thoughts build. But you will know more specifically the times and locations where these formations are likely to be successful. Understand the difference between that? It's not promising you profitability. It's not promising you 100% win rate. I'm not promising you a high rate of re return because all of you are in the driver's seat. But look at this chart. Is this not what I outlined before it happened? Absolutely it is. So this is on a daily chart. This is answering the folks that say, you know, I don't want to do this intraday trading. What's your target audience? My target audience is whoever wants to listen. And then they're going to take what I'm teaching and scale it to whatever time frame they want to utilize. If they want to be a swing trader, this is it. This is the model that I showed you right here, just being applied to this time frame. If you don't see the logic behind it, it's because you're still early in your stages of development. It's okay. Don't rush it. Don't be in a hurry to understand everything and feel like you're you're going to lose your mind if you don't have it understood, you know, in a couple weeks. Just enjoy the process. I'm giving you the logic and I'm showing you where it's going to go before it happens when it's applicable. I'm not promising to do that. I'm not an oracle for you. Okay. All right. So we're looking at this area here where it drops below this old low. It does it here and here on a shallow basis, but then we have this real nice decline yesterday on Monday's trading. So I want to take you into this right here and kind of like build on the idea of what liquidity does once it takes out old lows like this what can it do so we're zoomed in on monday's trading here and here's friday's trading and i want to take your attention to something i taught way 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 back in 2010 when i was on baby pips and i was contributing to that community and as a 
reminder, one of the things I taught was study the last three days, the open, the high, the low, and the close, in the last three days. Now, for those of you that were part of that community back then and knew me then, it was my laboratory experiment to see if anybody would start seeing the things that I saw early on in my development. Because nobody really sat down and said, hey, ICT, you know, look at the open, high, low, and close in the last three days, and you're going to find this thing. Okay? But if you were doing those types of things, nobody, not one person, came to the realization of the fair value gap. Nobody did. Okay? So no one's going to be able to come out and say, oh, yeah, I was that guy, I was that gal. Nobody did that. Okay, I shared this fair value gap because, number one, it's powerful. Two, it's not going to stop working. And it's unique to everything else out there. And it's very specific where it forms. And I'm going to give you some criteria on how you can find where they form also that are not necessarily where you might expect. But I'm also going to incorporate some of the things like rebalancing and then where does this formation form? I want to take your attention into this candle here, last Friday's low. So if this was Monday, go back the last three days, you go here, here, and here. Now, is there a fair value gap in that? No. But look what Monday's trading did. It opened, extended down, and closed near the low. It was a rather large range today. Okay, great, wonderful. What do you do with that information? Go back to the previous day's low. If you go back to the previous day's low, this is going to be important because if you do this, the next trading day, which is Tuesday, today's production video date, the 10th of May, 2022, if we open up, and because we're below those relative equal lows on the daily chart, and we're below this swing low also, we're now you know, in a deep discount. We don't try to pick bottoms, okay? We don't try to call the long-term lows while markets are bearish. We try to avoid doing it. I know it seems like it's possible because everybody makes videos on YouTube and they write books and they do articles and they say they did this and say they did that. They pick the top, they pick the bottom. I promise you, I know a lot and I have lost more money, <laughs> more money trying to do that than any other thing. You don't need to do that, okay? So now think about what this bias has been on these markets. What have I stated publicly? You all know I've been bearish, right? So when you see a big down day like this, all the indicators are going to flash oversold. Oversold. Okay. I'm not trying to pick a bottom, but indicator followers will look for a bullish divergence because they think that they're going to catch the ultimate low. And they're going to ride it up. When they, even if they were lucky to buy the low, the, the chances of them holding it long term, <laughs> not likely. So it's a fallacy to try to pursue that. Don't think like that. When we have a bias, collectively, as traders, I'm not just saying me specifically or my model. If any of you are trading, try to avoid trying to pick the tops and the bottoms. There's a lot of meat in between the major turning points. And you can afford to be wrong at the end. Because once you're wrong, it'll be obvious, then you can get in sync and go the other way. If you have drawdown, just work on getting it back and then work in that middle of the move type idea. It serves you well. But I want to take this idea here and we're going to drop down into a lower time frame after we see today's price action trade right up in here. Now this looks like an indecisive day. So if you're looking at a daily chart, it can be a little confusing, like, you know, what took place? This is a, a mixed day, they'll call it. No, 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 no. Let's go into this formation right here. Okay, I'm going to give you some logic. Now, here's the time when we get into the ICT videos that a large percent of you <laughs> do not want to do this part. You're welcome to obviously not listen, but you're going to miss the opportunity of learning. I want you to look at this price action and this fractal. Now, what is a fractal? A fractal is a piece of price action that's doing something that I'm trying to draw your attention to. Okay, we're studying a very small segment of price action. That's a fractal. So, if we're looking at this, and this is that old 
low that I extended on the daily chart. Now it's being visualized on an hourly time frame. So every one of these candles is not a daily candle, which shows the highest high and the lowest low of the daily range. It's now an hourly chart where it shows the highest high and the lowest low of each individual hour interval. I want you to think about what you see here. Now, for those of you that are new, don't be discouraged if you don't see what I'm going to show. But pause the video and look for what you can identify from what I've taught you so far in this mentorship. Do not rush through this. Pause it, think about what you see, and then unpause the video when you're ready. You know who you are. <laughs> you're missing out. You should have paused it. All right, so let's add some detail first. In perspective, you want to break your daily ranges up by the day. And I taught that midnight starts to cross over to a new day. I don't care what anybody else tells you. This is how the algorithm works. It operates on this timeline. Okay, It's on New York time. So at midnight here on Tuesday, we start here. The opening price is here. And if you draw that out in time, it goes up. It goes down and it comes right back to the close to where it opened up at midnight. And it would get very close to what that daily chart showed, that indecisive candle, where it was a lot of wick to the upside, a little bit of wick down to the downside, and a small little body. Okay, That looks indecisive on that time frame. But if you look closer and you start framing out the things I've taught you, here is relative equal highs old low, what's resting above relative equal highs? Buy side liquidity. What's resting below an old low? Sell side liquidity. The market runs above at 930. It hits that old low. That red line here, that old low, it hits that there right at 930. Then all of the buy side is purged. That means all of these buy stops have now been drug into the market by their hair. Kicking and screaming, they're in. They're caught long or they've been short and they've been knocked out of their short position. Either way, it doesn't matter to us. We just know that that buy side liquidity is likely to be utilized to set up an idea for smart money to be short. Why? Because the bias is bearish. We have not changed gears. We're not trying to pick the bottom. So if we're doing this like smart money and we're looking at the market like this and we want to be short up here at this trigger event, which we'll look at in a moment, where would you want to offset that short position? Well, you have a nice little short turn low here, so you can take partial below that. It hits it beautifully and the previous day's low. And it does that run below that low here just as handsomely as it did here. So. Let's go in and use the logic with this idea of rebalancing Monday's daily range, keying off of this level here. Notice that the buy side liquidity is ran first. This is really important, folks. If we would have gone down and took the previous low out, then ran up here, that to me is not bearish. This running above buy side liquidity here at 930, hitting that without having this low taken out, that is bearish because it's within the context of the bias that we're looking for. When we're operating in the, a bearish bias, what we're essentially saying is the market's going to go up to a premium for one of two reasons. Run an old high or highs to take out buy side liquidity. So that way smart money can counterparty with them with their short positions. They're going to sell to those buy stops. Then seeking to buy cheaper sell side liquidity. That would be their pool of liquidity to offset, distribute their shorts below here. So they're going to sell here at a high price and buy it back at a cheaper price. This is not a random unknown low. It's in the marketplace. As soon as that day closed, that low is known to everyone. But the liquidity resting below that is not necessarily a target or a utilization for anybody in any other retail idea. That's what I'm trying to shake you by your lapels and say, pay attention. I'm showing you how to look at the marketplace like smart money. Not like Wyckoff. This is not Wyckoff. Okay? It's not Sam's side and stuff. All these things that people like to attribute, this is not it. 
This is mine. This is, I'm telling you how these markets operate. And if it's not happening, after I say it happens or should happen, then I'm a fraud. It's fake. It doesn't hold up. But guess what? It works, folks. Look at all the people that are now digging their nose in their charts now with this idea. Come on now. <laughs> it's catching fire because it's simplified now. And I'm showing you what works. And it's exciting, isn't it? It's interesting to see these things panning out all the time, every single week, every single day, and it won't stop. The second pool of liquidity is the sell side liquidity. So it runs the buy side first with the bearish bias. So it's doing what I taught in this mentorship. It goes up to a premium, then seeks a discount. See that? Now we're going to drop into a 15 minute time frame. Zoom on in and get a little bit more details here. And now I have added the 8.30 time frame here. And we have the relative equal highs. The market at 8.30, we're looking for what to happen. The news embargo to lift. That means that the algorithm will start seeking liquidity as early as that time frame. Now, it might wait till 9.30. And this candle here is 9.30. Notice it hits it right there where we're drawing your attention to because it's rebalancing that entire Monday range. It's going back to the previous day prior to Monday. It's old low on Friday. So when you see that, it rebalances the big drop on Monday. It tricks people into thinking that it's made the low and it's going to keep going up. When the only thing it has done is it's gone up to a logical level on that daily time frame that rebalances all of that sell-off on Monday, it's been rebalanced. So if you look at the ninth on the 15-minute time frame, this does not look like it's an imbalance. But on the daily candle, it's a large down day. So... All of this movement here is big in terms of distribution on the downside. This is a retracement back up into a logical level, which is Friday's low. And it hits it based on the elements that I taught you. And it's following what the logic is that I shared publicly in this series. Look for relative equal highs. At 8.30, it's going to start looking for a high or highs to run. That's these over here. How far can it go? That's that Friday low. There's your framework. This is that Judas swing, that fake rally up. Okay, Think about what the daily candle looked like before we start dropping down in lower time frames. It was a big wick up and a little bit of a wick down, but it was a small little body on the candle for Tuesday's trading. But if you look at it from the lens of Power 3, how I teach you the accumulation at 830, use the opening price that's down here, draw that out in time, the rally should take place above that, hits a logical level I'm teaching you. Then it creates the pattern that's in the mentorship, fair value gap, market structure shift. Then it starts to show displacement and distribution to the downside, attacking a discount array. So <laughs> this is your power three where it opens, rallies up, creates the high and trades down. There's your move, power three. But it's inside that daily candle that looks indecisive, right? So you have to understand what you're looking at relative to time and price. When you do that, it takes away all that confusion. It provides more clarity. We're going to drop down into a five-minute chart and start building this into a very visual representation of what you've been learning in this series. Midnight New York. News embargo at 8.30 is lifted. Now, there wasn't a whole lot of news this morning, admittedly, but this still the same logic relative equal highs at 830 starts the algorithm. What's it going to do? It's going to run for a premium. Why? Because the bias is bearish. It's going to return likely up into that Friday low to rebalance Monday's trading. It's bearish candle was being rebalanced. And at 930 a.m., the equity market opens. That's what this little manipulation is. OK, what is 930? That's when you expect this little type of a move. But it begins at 830. So that hour-long interval, we're expecting, when we're bearish, a run higher to set up shorts. Now, the short can form inside that hour, or it could just provide the leg that sets up the framework that will eventually, like I'm going to show you here, provide you the setup. So all, all of it is a matter of 
studying what the market's providing you. It doesn't change the rules. I'm not bending the rules. I'm giving you the logic behind when these algorithms do what they're doing. When price starts to spool from 8.30 up into Friday's low, at 9.30, that's that manipulation time where they create that little opportunity where it looks like it's going to do something, but it's generally the opposite of what it looks like on the chart. In other words, retail is going to see that as it's breaking out, it's going higher, and they're going to want to buy it and chase it. And then they have their hinder parts handed to them. And then they just run the daily range against them to take out the sell side over here. Okay. But I want you to look inside this five minute run here and notice that this whole area is shaded here. That's the Judas swing. That's the fake rally in a down move that will be profitable for shorts. But at the time, retail won't see that. They won't identify it. They won't, it won't make any sense to them. They'll be caught off guard. But I want you to go into that range here. This right here, that is your displacement price swing. That right there, that's the leg on a five minute chart. You strip that down and you start going from five, four, three, two, and one until you find your fair value gap. So we're going to do that now, but I'm showing you how you're going to put your fib on the high and the low of that. For those that don't have the benefit of going back in hindsight, you may be watching this video far in the future. I've included it here so that way it's already done for you for, for study purposes. The 40, 44 and a half level is equilibrium or 50% of the range between the high and the low that run here, that drop down. Why am I nuding this? Because we have this swing low broken here. Now it could have stopped there and started to move up and we would use that range from here to here, but it just kept breaking lower, lower, lower. So it broke below this low and what looks like this low here. So it was several short term lows that were broken. Nonetheless, this is the displacement price leg. So this price swing here, you shade that while you're learning and then you start breaking that down into the lower time frames. So right now we're on the five minute chart. I'm going to keep this shaded area here on, but we're just going to transition from the five minute chart down to the four minute chart. So here's the four minute chart. 9.30 is this candle here. That's your Judas swing. At 8.30 it starts its run. This is the algorithmic price run. Goes to Friday's low. Rebalances the entire range on Monday's trading. It changes the narrative when retail traders think it's created the low. All the bullish divergence they would be seeing on their indicators and such, they're, they're screaming to buy. And breakout artists are looking at this break here because they think this is resistance broken now. Oh, it's coming back down to it. This is what is this? Resistance broken turn support, right? Okay, it breaks down a little bit. Okay, then it starts to run. Okay, oh, this is one of those instances where it was, you know, went past a little bit, but it's still going to go higher. You can, you can almost read into the price action what retail would be expecting here. But we're looking for something very specific. In this shaded area here, we're looking for a fair value gap. Do you see a fair value gap? Some of you would say this. Yeah, I didn't know that. You're reading my mind, ICT. Why not that one? What, if ha what would happen if I went into that and sold short? Well, first of all, if you did that, you were not following the rules because from this high down to that low, this is equilibrium. We need to get to a premium. We don't want to sell in a discount. That's not what we're doing here. So we have to get to this level here, 40, 44 and a half or higher. That's a premium based on that price swing. Do you understand what I just gave you there? Like that's a hard line rule that if you just follow that, it will keep you out of so many ill-fated scenarios. Now it's not 100% that you're gonna follow that and never take a losing trade. Because some of you are asking for that secret recipe, like I had that. If I had it, I wouldn't give it to you, okay? So it doesn't exist and I don't have it. So on both sides of the fence, just stop looking for that. Expect to lose money. If you're going to trade and you're using live money, you're going to lose money. It's a promise. I'm guaranteeing you, you're always going to run into a scenario that will eventually lose capital. Money will be withdrawn from your account. It sucks. It's not fun. Nobody signs up for that. They sign up for, well, if it works in my favor, I could make money. I could make enough money to go on a vacation each year. I could pay my car note. Those types of things. Okay. And some of you take it to an extreme where you're going to be rich and you ride around and 
charter airplanes and drive around in cars that cost too much money. To each their own. All I'm saying is, I'm going to teach you how to read price. <laughs> okay, so let's keep it germane to that. So there's no four minute fair value gap. On the three minute chart, inside this pink shaded area, that's the displacement leg, is there a fair value gap? You can pause the video here if you want, if you need more time. All right, for those that are prepared, there is no fair value gap here either. Nothing to do yet. So you drop down into your two minute chart. Okay, do you see a fair value gap in the two minute chart? You can pause the video if you need more time. All right, if you're not prepared, pause the video. Lo and behold, the unicorn. Here's the fair value gap. Small little imbalance right in here. And we took out the short term low. Now, some of you might see this if you were watching the two minute chart. Okay. Say you watched the two minute chart and you saw this short term low broken here, or maybe this one here, and you saw this. Is this displacement? One could argue, perhaps it is. Okay, now I'm going to give you the alternative. This is not twisting the rules. It's just showing you the logic of when you put a trade on in your demo account. Hear that? Compliance. This movement lower creates that fair value gap. Yes, we have a short-term low taken out there. Okay. This entry on this fair value gap if you utilize that, where would your stop loss be? It would have to be at least above the candle that creates the fair value gap. That's this one here. So your stop would be above here. Did it hit it? No. So even if you would have utilized that, you're not stopped out with this run here. Now, you might get scared to death when it running up after it moved in your favor like this and then comes back and retraces. But you cannot, listen to me folks, you cannot open a trade up like this and put a stop above here and watch it go down here and want to trail your stop loss real tight. You can't do that. You have to hold with a certain measure of risk open. And this is what filters out so many people in this industry. They can't do this. They either rush to get out of a trade that's marginally profitable because they can't stand it they're making money and they're so used to seeing it turn against them and stop them out or squeeze them if they don't use stops and they get out with big losing trades once they start getting marginally profitable trades they get out prematurely they don't even hold it for the models rules or they trail their stop loss so tight so quickly it strangles the position it doesn't even give it a chance to move and breathe so how do you do that we're going to talk a little bit about stop placement now initially when it opens the trade up the rule is you want to use the candle that creates the fair value gap that high, just above that. Okay, one tick, two ticks above that. That's sufficient enough. If you are scared and you just want to use a, a nice, handsome, ample stop, you would use a swing high here. Oh, that's a lot of movement. So what? They have micro account positions that you can trade with. So may not be trading them any. Trade micros. If it, if it requires you that much of a stop to sleep at night, Okay, knowing that what you're doing isn't going to wreck and ruin you, then use micros. It's $5 per point or handle versus $50 per handle on a mini. So it's scalable. It's, it's something that most people should be able to weather. If you can't weather something like that with a micro, then you're really trading. You're not prepared to trade. You don't have enough equity and you're underfunded. Okay, and I don't mean that to be talking down to anybody. That's just the real skinny okay a lot of people try to go in here and they want to trade with a hundred dollar account and you're just asking to fail you really are asking to fail so you can't be undercapitalized but once you place your stop here or here when do you start moving your stop well you want to see a larger shift in structure when this low is taken out down here then then 
you can move your stop down. Say it was up here, then you can move it to here. Okay? Or maybe here. Why? Because it's already broke down. So it's not going to go down here and come back up here. If it does, then you're probably wrong. Or it's going to consolidate, which means it's going to be an ugly condition to be working within anyway. See the logic there? I'm accepting the fact that I'm probably going to be wrong if it stops me out, but who cares if it does? Why would I have that opinion of not caring if it stops me out? How many times have you seen this pattern form? Think about it. Over the course of a week, how many times does a pattern form? It's forming somewhere every day. <laughs> okay? It's forming everywhere. Either in the London session, overnight highs and lows, or it's forming in a New York session. I'm teaching you the New York session because you have the advantage of knowing what took place in London. That's, the, that's why I'm teaching this. Does it work in London? Absolutely. Does it work in Asia? Not that often. And that's why I haven't pushed hard for Asia. I know there's some of you, hey, I need to know something in Asia. For those ideas and those traders that are really focused on trading that time frame, and because they have businesses or that's just the way they can trade only at the time that they can be in front of the charts, you want to be trading the yen pairs for Forex. You want to be trading the New Zealand dollar and the Australian dollar. They tend to have a little bit more movement during those periods because that's when their markets start. So you can look for this type of pattern to form there on the one through five minute charts in the Asian session. So I gave you that. That's as far as I'm going to go with it. I'm not going to be doing all kinds of videos about it. Just know it's one of the most illiquid times for me. I'm letting the market create those periods of the day where a lot of traders are starting early because like anything else, we're really quick to get into something, but we rarely ever finish it. And students that come under my wing are really good testimonials about that. They'll come in, they'll say, I'm going to stick with this, but then they realize it takes a little bit more effort than they're ready for, and they quit. And trading in general is like that. And they think that because in New Zealand, Wellington doesn't really begin today. They think and they teach, and all these other traders have to say, you know, Wellington starts the, the 24 hour cycle. And it does not start the cycle. This is how you know someone doesn't know what they're talking about. These algorithms operate on New York time and it begins at midnight. Period. End of story. I don't care whose brother's cousin, sister knows this guy that works at a bank that says ICT is full crap. I don't care. Bring those people here. Challenge what I'm showing you here. Okay? Show me how this is wrong. That's all I'm asking because I'm doing it, I'm proving it. And everybody else is seeing it themselves. So, do you dismiss the evidence? Do you ignore it? Do you walk around with blinders on? Because maybe I'm not the personality that fits what you were hoping for in terms of a mentor. I'm being honest. And I'm proving it. I'm showing it to you. It's repeating. Why argue? Why wrestle with it? <laughs> Take it. Be thankful. You know, and, and do something positive with it. So here's what we have. We have the whole model identifying a setup, moving back to a rebalance of Monday's price range, back up to Friday's low, hitting that level there, and then creating the setup that's happening at the time elements, the same way I teach it in the series. And here it is, boom. Comes in, hits it, breaks down, Pairs up with the sell side liquidity. Smart money sells short here and then adds to it here. Breaks. Trades into here during the lunch hour. Your limit order, if it was used, would be filled during the lunch hour, and not around 1230. The only thing about this day that I did not like is I would have rather seen it deliver this movement here just ahead, if not right at 12 o'clock. That's the only thing that did not line up with what I was expecting today. I was looking for this candle right here to punch down and hit that level and go through it like it did here. And it was just about 27 minutes later. So that's not bad, right? I mean, looking at it like this, doesn't this make sense? Seriously, folks, in closing, doesn't this logic make sense? The market goes up to trick people into thinking it's going to go higher or knock those people that are short making money going down, in other words. Their orders that protects them or puts them in a new trade going up or out of a short trade, 
that buy side liquidity is attacked. The algorithm goes up there, not because people bought it, not because smart traders work together to get the traders to go up there because of their buying pressure. That's not what this is, folks. The algorithm goes up there whether there is sufficient volume or not. That's the dividing statement. When I say those types of things, people that think they understand these markets, people that have made money doing things that have nothing to do with how these markets book, it's hard for them to understand what I'm saying because their faith-based religion on their system prevents them from seeing the obvious logic that's being shown here. These markets are controlled, they're rigged, and they're algorithmically driven. How many times do you need to see these things before you can just lay down all the other ideas? There's no reason to buy other people's courses, and I know I'm going to get flamed for this, and then I'm just going to invite more trolls. I don't care. Okay? You don't need to buy any courses. You don't need to be in anybody else's subscriptions, okay? Teaching rehash stuff. What I'm showing you here, if you put the time in learning this, you will not need to do anything else. Period. You won't need to worry about breakers. You won't need to worry about mitigation blocks. You won't need to worry about buy side and balance, sell side inefficiencies. None of those things that's also taught in the things I teach in my private group. Why? Why would you want anything more than this? This is so easy. This is so easy. It doesn't inundate you with so many things and variables. That's what's going on right now. I'm going to be honest with you folks. My private group, which no one can join anymore, is so rich with things that make it almost impossible for most of the students to pick what they are going to settle in because everything I show works. But they can't settle in on one thing because they're like a kid in the candy store. And because of that, they're not really fully engaging with one specific approach. With this, listen to the comments. Well, read the comments, actually. Some of them are actually in the comments saying, this worked for me, and they've been charter members for years. What was it? I did what I've trained them to do, but they weren't willing to do it on their own, which is take what makes sense, one pattern, one setup, apply the time and price, theories that I teach around the algorithmic ideas and then look for that one setup and submit to the, just that and make it very, very simple. That's what this is, folks. I can do this with a breaker. I can do this with a mitigation block. I can do this with a just a stop run on buy stops. I can do it with a run on sell stops. I can simplify all this. Anything I trade with, I can do this the same way. I can strip it down to a simple model. There's no need to ask me to join my private group, folks. So please stop asking in the comment section. Please stop sending me emails. I don't want your money. I don't need your money. Okay? I don't need any of those types of things. I, I want to do what I'm doing here. I enjoy this. I am a teacher at heart. I love doing this. And the fact that I'm seeing so many people around the world dive into this and find their own niche in it. And it only takes the time to invest in reading the things I'm showing you in the chart, listening to the logic I'm teaching in the audio commentary, and then doing the homework assignments of back testing and looking at it. You will decide at that moment if this is something that fits you. If it doesn't fit you, there's no harm in that. I'm not offended by that. I have people that paid me that said, I, I just can't make this work for me. And I have other people that are killing it. What's the difference? personality and capacity. Some people can't do it at all. Some people can do it. They just haven't done the proper things in the right order. This is a simplification. What I have done here in this series, whether you realize it or not, my mentorship group that have paid me, some of them were kicking and screaming because I've done this. Others, majority, have been very appreciative because they have used this to help understand what it is that they should be doing with all the other things I taught. Now, when I say that, it sounds like I'm dangling a carrot. Oh, he's got more secret stuff and this is better. There is nothing more easier, readily made, just go out and start doing what I... 
than this, <laughs> okay? I swear to you, okay? Listen, folks, this is an invitation. If you are a, a private member of my mentorship, okay, tell everyone in the comment section that this is something that has been spelled out very simply and plainly better than any other model that I've done. I've done 12 specific trading models in my private mentorship. This one here, I stripped down. I made it very, very simple with the expectation that my daughter would learn it. This is the easiest ICT application you're ever going to get. I literally sat down and said, how can I take something that my daughter who has no interest whatsoever, none, how can I make this so that way she could see it, when to expect it, when will it form, how to figure out where it should be, and what do you do once it forms? That's what I've done here. Is it hard? For some of you, it would, it would feel like it is because I'm reading some of the comments. And it's because you haven't spent enough time, that's all. But I promise you, when there's more examples shown and you go through the videos a few times, it'll start to become more clear. If you're trying to apply other things like Bollinger Bands and garbage like that, you, you're, you're not using the model and you're not going to get the results that would be otherwise available to you if you just do what I'm telling you to do and avoid the things I'm telling you to avoid. And that's it. I promise you this. If you give this mm, three months of study, serious, sleeves rolled up, diligently going in every single day, back testing and looking at it, and then for at least two or three more months of forward testing it, six months, six months with just what I've taught here, I am confident, I am absolutely confident that you will have found your model. It's simple, it's rule based, it's visually pleasing to see because you know what you're looking for. It's a specific time pattern with the algorithm. So you're getting in sync with what the algorithm is going to do, just like smart money does. Okay? You want to be like the composite man? This is what the composite man's doing. He's not looking at Wyckoff schematics. And I know that might upset some of you, and that's not my intent. But they're looking at liquidity like this. They're looking at how the market's going to allow them to fleece the uninitiated. That's just the way it works, folks. You might not like it. It might feel unfair, so therefore, I don't want to believe this guy. He's talking conspiracies. Call it whatever you want to call it. I call it the market. And until next time, be safe.